Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the IRCGN, the Ballistics Laboratory of the French Gendarmerie, where uh, they have given us permission to pull out some of the really interesting experimental French guns from their collection, and film them for you guys. Today we have a Moss model of 1949 which is not particularly descriptive by itself, because that's actually the pattern of rifle that was formally adopted by the French army, but the Moss 49 that was actually adopted was a semi-automatic rifle in 75 by 54 millimeter, a full-power semi-auto only battle rifle. At the end of World War II, the French military sets up an arms development program to essentially replace its entire suite of small arms, everything from pistols up to heavy machine guns. And while the Moss 49 was adopted, there was actually a whole series of development on a type of weapon that didn't get adopted and sort of orphaned itself into nothing, and that was the carabine mitrailleur, or the, well, machine carbine. This is really analogous to the German Sturmgewehr. Uh, and the French, of course, had seen a substantial uh, <laughs> demonstration of the Sturmgewehr, and they recognized its potential utility, and there was a development program to come up with a, an equivalent sort of firearm for the French army in the late 1940s. Now, well, we'll talk about exactly what happened to this line of development in a minute, but first let's talk about where this particular kind of gun came from. So this is the Moss model of 1949. Moss at this point was also, well in fact all of the arsenals, were uh, also submitting guns for the submachine gun development program. Now that particular program uh, would be won by the Tull arsenal with the MAT-49 submachine gun being adopted. But in 1948 Moss submitted this. This is the Moss model of 1948 submachine gun. You may notice the aesthetic similarities between these two guns. Well this one did well enough that it was actually produced like pre-production serial production and went through field combat trials in Indochina didn't eventually get adopted, but Moss developed its intermediate caliber carbine and its submachine gun on exactly the same mechanical system. These are both lever-delayed blowback guns with essentially all the same features and controls, which is really interesting. We've seen that done a number of times, but this is like, usually you don't get it with a carbine and a submachine gun sharing the same mechanical system, which they can do in this case because they're lever delayed. This isn't just a simple blowback submachine gun. So I have a previous video on the Moss 48 development. If you're interested, you can check that out. But right now we're going to take a look at the two different versions of Moss 49 carabine mitrailleur. We have the one with the folding wood stock, and of course we have the one with the collapsing wire stock. These carabine mitrailleur are going to share virtually all of the features of the submachine guns that were in the Moss 48 program. So if we just look from the outside at the, the basic mechanical features, you'll see we have a folding stock, exactly the same sort of release button as on. Oh, by the way, we have a, an unlocking button right there to unlatch the stock from the receiver. It snaps into place, and if you want to fold it, it's that button right there. Our disassembly screw is the same, although it is missing on this example. Unfortunately there are a bunch of missing parts on these two guns. But uh, we have the same sort of folding magazine well, although now you can see we have a larger magazine. Um, this is a French made magazine, but it is for the 30 carbine cartridge. The French started this program by developing their own 7.65 by, I think it was 35 millimeter cartridge. It was a 93 grain bullet at 2350 feet per second. That development didn't last all that long before they switched it up to 30 carbine, which was more readily available. 30 carbine is a little bit heavier bullet, 110 grain, but traveling a bit slower, about 2,000 feet per second. So you'll know if, you, if you've watched US M1 carbine development, you know that when they went from 15 to 30 rounds they had to add a curve to the magazine. The French did that here with a slight continuous curve to their mags. And we have two different patterns of magazine on these two guns. I believe this is a 20 and a 30, although it might be a 25 and a 30. You know, these are all uh, developmental prototype guns, and so there are a lot of features that change between them. In fact, if we take a look at the markings here, you can see this is a Type Moss 1949, caliber 762, which refers to 30 carbine in this case. This is serial number 4, 
And our other one with the wire folding stock is exactly the same thing, but serial number 5. The gun has a grip safety on it, but it does not have a manual safety catch. That's because it's really not necessary with the folding magazine well. Once the mag well is folded up, there is no way for a cartridge to get into the chamber. You now they're 90 degrees out of orientation to do so. The magazine is locked in this position until you press the button and fold it back. And so you can carry the gun with the mag folded, with a loaded magazine, and no worries about accidental or negligent discharge. Once you do fold it down, essentially put the gun in the firing position, uh, this then has a progressive trigger to it, so a short pull will fire in semi-auto. You can hear the disconnector clicking, and then once you do that you can pull it back the rest of the way. That will hold the sear down and allow it to fire in full auto for as long as you want, or till you run out of ammunition. We have a big chunky front sight there in a protective hood, just like the submachine guns. The barrel is basically a full carbine length barrel though. And we have a rear aperture sight that can be adjusted out to 600 meters, and has a, a windage adjustment screw on it so that you can uh, get it nicely zeroed. The aperture itself is much like the Moss 36, it is a tiny little aperture hole to sight through. Disassembly on this is just like the submachine guns, we're going to fold the stock. Uh, we would then take this disassembly screw out, but like I said it's missing on this example. And then I can slide the grip and fire control assembly out. This is where you can see our sear resetting itself, unless I hold it all the way down like so. So again, this is, in fact, I can show you on the submachine gun here, I essentially do exactly the same thing. And there you go, that's the submachine gun grip frame, that's the carbine grip frame, essentially identical components. Now the recoil spring on this is missing. Um, it would, it would look basically like this. This is the version out of the submachine gun, and it even, like, it fits. The carbine one was just a little bit longer, but what we have here is a lever delayed blowback system, which is why they're able to use the same mechanical system for the carbine and the submachine gun. So this is the firing position, you can see the firing pin protrudes there. Um, and when it's in this position, this lever extends down into a notch in the receiver, and it's right in there. Unfortunately there's like really no way for me to get a camera angle in there to show it to you up close, but that lug drops into its notch, and before this can recoil backwards, this has to lift up, and it has a lug that connects up right there into the bolt carrier component. So when you fire it, this stays in place. As it tries to push backward, it's going to lift this lug up, which through the power of leverage is going to have to pull this component back. The mass of this and the spring that has to compress in order to pull it back, that's what delays the opening of the bolt enough for safe operation. So if we compare these two, this is the carbine, this is the submachine gun, you can see that the carbine bolt and carrier are both larger, they, these have more mass to accommodate the greater kinetic energy of the 30 carbine cartridge compared to 9mm parabellum. The wire stocked version actually uses this end plate to both lock the stock in place and for disassembly. So the first step is to lift it up, this is really pretty tight and sticky here. But we lift that up to the point that we can pull the stock out, and then it is actually under spring tension, it pops down. Note that it can't come out like this when the stock is installed, and then, then I can pull the grip mechanism out. It is interesting to note that this one does not have a semi-auto uh, setting, it is full auto only, there is no disconnector in it. And of course the back end here is a little bit different to accommodate this wire stock version. You know, this is the sort of thing you get with developmental prototypes. They're all a little bit different. Now, there's our bolt and carrier. And then the other interesting bit here is on these the barrel is actually quick removable, which is really kind of unusual. 
So we have an M for montage, which is assembled, and a D for demontage, which is disassembled. And if I rotate this pin over, or lever, over there, I can actually pull the barrel out. You can see it's coming back here. Now, this doesn't really want to come out, so I'm not going to take it all the way out. I will note that right there, the ejector flips all the way out backwards so that it doesn't get in the way of the barrel. And you can see the barrel coming out, but it gets tight here and I don't want to mess this up. So I'm going to leave it there and just point out that you can, in fact, take the barrel out of this for easy replacement or removal. You can see this semicircular notch right there. All this lever is doing um, is basically it's a pin with a crescent cut in it. So when it's in this position, it locks in there. Um, pretty basic method of having a quick change barrel. But that is the Moss Model 1949 Carabine Mitrailleur, disassembled or uh, field stripped at this point. Ultimately, this would be a short-lived development program. By the end of 1949, the debate over intermediate caliber versus full power caliber had been solved, and it was solved with the adoption of the Moss 49 rifle, which is of course totally distinct from the Moss 49 uh, mil uh, machine carbine that we have here. So a little bit of terminological confusion going on. But the development of the, the intermediate caliber guns ends in France with a, de a decision to stick to full power rifle cartridges. And I think th that sort of decision is always a trade-off. On the one hand, a gun like this is much easier for individual soldiers to control. This is a better individual weapon than a semi-automatic full power rifle by far. However, it means that you have three different cartridges being used. You have the submachine gun cartridge, the assault rifle cartridge, and then also the machine gun cartridge, which is going to be your full power rifle round, 75 by 54 in this case. By sticking to, by, by keeping the individual rifle and the machine guns in the same cartridge, you can simplify your logistics to only having two cartridges, the pistol round for the submachine guns and handguns, and the rifle round for everything else. And so that combined with questions of range and stopping power, etc., this decision ends in French adoption of a full power battle rifle. Um, these disappeared into nothing. Um, at the same time, by the way, it's worth pointing out, 1950, 1951, a substantial amount of surplus US war material arrives in France, um, destined for Indochina, and so the immediate needs of new small arms for Indochina are substantially reduced, and that kind of removes the need to develop a bunch more stuff. Uh, if they want guns like this, well, they've got M1 and M2 carbines from the US military that can fill that role. So a big thanks to the Gendarmerie for giving me access to these two guns, don't forget this guy, to film. They are super cool and I have found them basically nowhere else. It's a really neat, I think, a really neat element of French small arms development. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. Thanks for watching.